Good morning, Mr. Chopper. Um, you made a lot of comments a minute ago about data protection, and I think it's one of the most serious issues we have facing us today. Uh, but my comment would be, if you're really serious about data protection, I hope that you work with us with regards to uh, us being able to rein in beneficial ownership and the rulemaking that goes with it. Originally, it was only four data points. Now it's 52 data points that we're looking at. That really endangers a lot of information on our citizens and businesses unnecessarily. This is where you can help us if we can rein this in and get it back to where the rule originally was. We sure appreciate your help on that. And some financial institutions and others have raised this with me. Um, it is part of a FinCEN rulemaking, and I'm, a, I'm actually happy to talk about with, that with I you. look forward to it. Um, one of the things that we talk about here is junk fees, which really is, uh, that, that word really riles me up because it is not a legally enforceable term. It's something you guys have made up. But one of the things that includes, that's included in junk fees, and your definition anyway, is, is late fees. I have here a Cato Institute uh, a letter from Nicholas Anthony, 101 late fees charged by the government. Have you looked into any government late fees at all? Yeah, actually, I think there's a need to do a wholesale review of some of the fees that are being charged even by government. Um, there has been ongoing discussions about how to make sure that they're in line with what Congress wanted, that they are sensible, that we have a, a good policy around that. So I would really support um, looking at a lot of those fees. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to introduce for the record, uh, without objection, the, the letter. Without objection. Thank you. Um, also, uh, title insurance. Director Chopra, Congress explicitly omitted the business of insurance from CFPB statutory authority under Dodd-Frank. In fact, the business of insurance was explicitly excluded from the jurisdiction of CFPB because it's effectively regulated at state level. You've confirmed under oath and on the record before this committee that the CFPB has no authority to regulate the business of insurance. Do you stand by that? Uh, correct. The business of insurance um, is in the FTC Act, the CFPA, it's in the McCarran-Ferguson Act. It, it describes a certain set of activities related. So why, why are you asking for uh, information with regards to title insurance fees uh, and, and trying to get in there and get in that business? Well, just so you know, we do regulate aspects of insurance. Certainly the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act, the CFPB, I think for years, has taken enforcement actions related to title. We have important roles when it comes to mortgage insurance. We also have a role in homeowners insurance. So I think the business of insurance really relates to some capital and liquidity issues. But do know, I, I'm very um, aware about the restrictions we have, and we're trying to be very mindful about where we do have explicit Well, it, it would authority. appear to me that there's a severe encroachment there on the, on the insurance folks when you're looking at, at this, uh, at title insurance. I don't see any reason for the CFPB to involve it. Well, the Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act specifically goes through how things are disclosed, including title insurance. It also talks if it's, about If it's correctly backs. disclosed, what, where is your authority? Well, I'm happy to share with you, we have a, a range of authority as it relates to insurance in the mortgage market, and again, as it relates to the business insurance that the state regulators um, oversee, we respect their role completely. Okay, very good. Um, you talked to me a minute ago about some of, about credit cards for medical payments. And, you know, I wrote a letter to you some time ago. In fact, it was um, almost, um, well, almost a year ago, actually, back in October of 23. Um, and I got a letter back that didn't answer my questions with regards to that. I'm very concerned. It's a good way for some people to pay their bills. It's a regulated product, and yet you're trying to restrict that from what I understand. And I, the, the questions in my, in my letter were not answered, so let's try to go through them right quick. Um, please indicate where the term medical payment product is used anywhere in statutory law. Uh, so let me just clarify. The rule we have proposed as it relates to credit reporting and medical debt does not include medical credit cards. So medical credit cards are fairly more advanced innovation of recent years where there is point of sale loans or credit card uh, brokering at the healthcare facility. We have been studying this market because it's been growing quite quickly and it has been a source of some significant consumer complaints. We have not taken any sort of specific action on it, but I think we do want to understand when a patient where, is- Where's your authority to do that? Uh, under the Truth in Lending Act. Okay, where, to, to regulate medical product, medical, medical payment product? No, any sort of extent. So Congress in 1968 set the parameters for extensions of credit um, in the Truth in Lending Act and did assign authority to uh, enforce that to the CFPB. So 
even if you are getting a third-party medical loan, regardless of where it's offered. Uh, Thank you. My time's expired. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.